Hey guys, behind me is a 1971 Ford Bronco. With all the hype about the newest Bronco coming out, I thought it was a good idea to go back and revisit the original one and see what it was that made this a people's favorite. In today's video, I'm gonna go over some of the features of this vehicle. I'm also gonna take it for a spin. And lastly, I'm gonna talk to the proud owner. His name is Dave, and he's gonna tell us what it took him to bring this car back to this spec, which is a beautiful, it looks like a time capsule actually. Are you ready? Let's go. The first generation ran from 1966 to 1977, so it ran for 11 years. This is a 1971, and for 1971, the engine displacement had grown. Instead of the original 289 V8 that it had, it now came with a 302, and this one, that's what it has, and it's the original engine. This vehicle was supposed to compete with the Jeep CJ5 at the time, and also the International Harvester Scout. They were all very similar vehicles. The designers of the car try to make as many flat surfaces as possible just to save on money. So you will have this block, this rugged truck-like drive because this is back in the time when trucks were trucks and they were utilitarian. And this, this is what it is. It's a flat windshield that the windows are flat as well. Every window in this vehicle has no curves. It's just a straight window as well as the grill and the bumpers. Uh, moving on to the side profile. Some of my favorite features about this car is just the boxy look, the short overhangs, and then this, these wheels are 15 inch wheels. From what I know, the first couple of years came with 14 inch wheels, and I think this came out as an option later. Also, you have this manual locks for the front hubs, and I think they're called free running front hubs. And uh, these hubcaps, they're original. They just look amazing. They're shiny, they're a little bit discolored, but hey, they're, what, 50 years old? One thing that makes this car very desirable and very unique is the fact that all the trims are still there. They're still in great shape. They're chrome, they're shiny. It's part of the appearance package, as well as some other stuff that I'm gonna mention once we get into the interior. Another option that he had is got the dual gas tanks. As I said earlier, this vehicle looks like it just came out of the factory. The matching color of the bumper and the removal top is called Wimbledon White and it was repainted to match the original color. Another feature that was an option for this car was the swing away spare tire carrier. And we're gonna open it right now. You just lift this lever right here. And then we're gonna take this opportunity to show you how the top opens this window. Everything is in working condition, amazing. And then this just opens like a regular old, old school truck. and then you, you can just camp. So the space in the back is pretty tight, but remember, this, these cars were more of a utility, a real utility SUV. These were not meant to carry families. So under, I mean, for today's standards, the space is very limited, but let's not take this vehicle out of context. So in the back, you can probably fit a large luggage, and that's about it. What I remember about all these vehicles from the 70s is they all open from the outside. So if you parked it at a, at a ball game or something, you wouldn't be surprised to come back and not find your battery. So the way you open this is you just pull this latch. And then there's another release right here. And then there's a rod. And it goes right in this hole. So this is where the magic starts. Let's take a look at this engine. Looking at this engine bay, I'm just amazed by the attention to detail to the reconditioning of this vehicle. I may be wrong, but I think back in my day, this blue was called Ford Blue. And I think it's an exclusive color of Ford, if I'm not mistaken. I wonder if it came out, if it came like this from the factory. So let me know in the comments if this was a different color out of the factory. But I know that this blue color may be a color exclusive to Ford. But I'm unsure, so I don't want to mislead you with that. Other than that, the whole engine bay was repainted. It's just amazingly clean. Everything in working order. This, uh, this 302 engine, believe it or not, is the same engine running in Ford vehicles right now. It's a, what you see currently in this newer Ford is a variation of this engine that has been running for what? Uh, since I think it's 1970, if I'm not mistaken, that's when the 302 started. And it's the same engine in 2021, amazing. Another thing that I want to talk about is the suspension setup. It's got springs in the front and it's got leaf springs in the back. And they're solid axles. Both of them are solid axles. This was the norm 
back in those days. So expect, expect this ride to be very bumpy and uh, for today's standards. The shorter wheelbase makes for a bumpier ride, but hey, this is a 1971 vehicle. Single tip exhaust. And those 15 inch wheels, I think they sit perfectly with this car. And you have to take the good with the bad because this car hasn't been molested at all. I remember that this car, uh, one of the conversions that is pretty uh, common with this car, people cut out the rear fender well, or wheel well, I'm sorry, to make it match the one in the front. Because if you think about it, if you look at it like this, it looks funny, right? The front being a little higher than the back. So what people do is they cut out this and then they put some plastic flares. And then, uh, I mean, it looks nice, but see, once you start that road, then you're, you're not gonna have an original anymore. So that's one thing that, to think about is how close do you wanna stay to the original? Look at the detail of these wheel caps. I don't wanna imagine losing one. I'm gonna take it for a drive, but I'm so afraid to break anything in this car because they're expensive and hard to find. Look, from what it looks like, the wheels have been painted, same to match the bumpers and the removable top. And one thing about this top is it's actually metal. And I'm gonna try to mention, I'm gonna try to pronounce the color of the top and the bumpers. It's called Wimbledon White. Yes. How good did I do? That's good. <laughs> Look at these gaskets. Are they new? Yeah, all See, the rubber's new. All the rubber's new. No compromises on this, man. All the rubber. Look how clean this looks. I remember talking to Dave maybe like a year ago, maybe a little bit less. And to me, it looked just as clean and he said he wasn't done. And I'm like, are you obsessed? Are you crazy? But it's that, it's that just, uh, he picked this up six years ago and he started working on it. And uh, a lot of pain, a lot of tears, a lot of fighting around to make it look like this. A true time capsule. Wow. Sitting in the driver's seat of a 1971 Ford Bronco. This sitting position reminds me of all the utility trucks, the SUVs, utility trucks that we used to drive back in the 80s when I was a kid driving around my dad's trucks. So you have a super tall sitting position, a commanding position to drive the car. So you feel like the king of the road in this car. It's just amazing. So it's got a lot of switches here and I'm sorry if I'm not that familiar with them. Here's the lights. I'm sure that you pull all this because that's how my dad's truck used to work. The wimper washer, everything seems to work. And then you have a heater, from what I understand, and no AC in this car. One of the things that this car doesn't have, it doesn't have a power steering pump. So it's a mechanical steering, which is hard. I mean, if you're not used to it. So what helps that is this larger diameter wheels that make that turning a little bit easier, but it is what it is, these are old cars. It also doesn't have power brakes. So it just has the mechanical brakes and it has drums in the front. So it takes a while for somebody that's never driven a vehicle this old to get adjusted to the, uh, to the longer braking distances, the harder steering wheel to turn. It's just what it is. And to be honest with you, I haven't driven a three-speed column mounted transmission in what 20 30 years i haven't driven one so to the entry and i well it's got, i got flies in here to the entry and i this looks like an automatic transmission setup but no it's, it's actually a um it's called a column mounted transmission it's a three speed so we're gonna wait for dave to show us that because i don't want to i don't play too much with it so here's my clutch also is the longer throw of the clutch and same thing, very mechanical, very analog. And then you have the four wheel selector in the bottom. A very common conversion for these trucks or for these SUVs is to bring the gear selector to the floor because it's, this, these are sloppy. It's just, it's, it's what came with the vehicle. So it's a lot more convenient to have it down here. And same thing, if you notice uh, this lever is very long for today's standards. Usually. 
you will have like knobs or even if you have something like this it's a very short lever that is usually on the side this is big that's because these cars were meant for work remember not pretty just meant for work but there's a lot of charm in this this finishes of this vehicle you know with this uh, metal wind builder white same thing to match the color of the removable top and the bumpers and all these accents these panels on the doors same thing they're to match the color and from what i hear from the owner dave he said that he made sure that when he refurbished these seats he tried to get as close as possible to the ones that he came with to this color it's kind of like a bone like an off-white color and this just looks amazing so moving on here to the to the visors same thing white color matching and this hump right here it just covers the windshield uh, wiper motors they're mounted on the top so it's for a cleaner look and then we have these roll-up windows so cool so something that reminds me of my childhood again is playing with this wind window it's called so this locks right here so you gotta push it in make sure that it's sealed and then bring it down and it looks original so cool and then when it comes to the cluster look how basic this is so it's just a speedometer and then you have the alternator that for the battery meter and then you have the gas tank meter the temperature and the oil pressure nothing else something very unique about this truck is this right here this is a fuel indicator uh, selector so when you switch the tanks you want to switch this too so that you get the reading of the accurate amount of gas that you have on the car Back in the day, these odometers only came with five digits. So right now it reads 53,071 miles, but I don't know if it's the first round, second round or third round. I really don't know. I have to ask Dave. Maybe we'll ask him later when we go for the drive. So to add to the overall experience of an older vehicle, you will know that these vehicles don't come with the liner, at least not in this, um, this model. It came like this from the factory. So once you get on the road, it may get a little loud. So things to keep in mind, this is a 1971 vehicle, so take the pros with the cons. If you plan to drive this daily, remember it doesn't have a power steering pump, it doesn't have ABS, it doesn't have power brakes, um, it doesn't have a liner uh, for, the, for the roof, and it doesn't have, for example, um, any sound deadening uh, materials. But what it does have is it has this very cool, it's like a rubber liner with the bronco emblem it makes it look so cool so now let's look a little bit at the interior to go to the back you have this release lever right here you bring it down and this is not user friendly you have to be an athlete to get in the back <laughs> very very intricate so there's this little back seat right here very very cool so this back seat is very comfortable i'm surprisingly comfortable here uh, a lot lots of um, leg room and you have this high sitting position and the windows are, are pretty open so you have tons of visibility towards the outdoors and then you have this this nice roll bar and every bolt looks new in this interior amazing I just have I said amazing today and then look at this seat can carry too comfortable Super slow here because I don't want to touch it. Can you just run me through the gears? Uh, which one is first, second, third? So first is uh, towards you and down, and then to go into second, you push it up and away from you slightly, like that. That's second, and then third, straight down from second. Oh wow, that a little looks, early, but that looks scary. Yeah, it, it takes some getting used to. I, I still sometimes don't wow. get the going in a second. It's it's a little trickier. Lots of nostalgia going on right here. Three in the tree. There you go. Oh, uh, the big right there. Yeah. Okay. So first here. I'm so sorry. Okay, second is up. Give it a little slack first. The second? There you go. Yeah. Okay, I don't think we're gonna make it the third. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable doing 20 miles an hour. We're gonna baby this thing. I don't wanna break it on me. 
because I don't want to buy it. Is it a full tank? Is it reading correctly? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Very commanding view of the road. I really like it. High visibility. I love it, man. I really love it. And I kind of miss driving these things, you know? Makes me want to go back and get one of those vehicles that I had along the way. Maybe like my 1985 uh, Jeep, the CJ7. It was very similar. A little bit more modern, but it was basically the same. Utilitarian, boxy, horrible gas mileage, but just so full of charm. The engine sounds so good. It just looks and feels so capable. Just like you drove it off the lot back in 1971. Thank you for letting me drive this, David. Yeah, no problem. Yes, you know, we're not gonna operate this baby. And there you go. Mm -hmm. The issue with the brakes is weird. It feels like uh, the, the brakes feel numb. It's yeah, just it's the nature the of this mechanical modern cars. And see, you know, as long as the car is moving, this is like it, yeah, it turns fine. Turns fine. And the thing it's is, stop. it's the large diameter that allows you to to have that smoother, mm -hmm. easier turn. Um, how do you do reverse? You towards you and then straight up. There you go. That should. But be. it doesn't feel like okay, nice in here. It doesn't. Did you? Oh well, yeah, you didn't push it all the way up. There, there's okay, yeah. Sorry guys. It just gets take it, you know, some getting used to, you know, uh, the feel for it. So, so much gas. Why? Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> okay. It was just a very short drive. Okay, in the down and and towards me? Yeah, you gotta pull it towards you more. There you go. I feel like I worked out just turning this steering wheel. True time capsule. Congratulations, David. You have a beautiful, beautiful four Bronco 1971. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. oh, I'm just gonna put here while I'm ahead. The bottle. So, just uh, <laughs> yeah, just put it in a neutral and then um, like no, in the middle there is neutral. <laughs> and then so, um, and then the just engine. Clear the engine and put on the e-brake. Dave, why don't you talk to us about the restoration process that you had to go through for the last five, six years? Sure. Um, I started about almost six years ago where we brought it into the body shop and everything was completely taken apart, nut and bolt, off the frame. We powder coated the frame, sanded everything down, sandblasted everything down, um, repainted everything. All the uh, new rubber and, and old rubber was taken out and all, anything that was r rubber or deteriorated was replaced. We went through and polished the, uh, the original uh, trim on here, the wheels, the, painted the wheels underneath, polished up this trim here, put on new mirrors. Um, the old ones were, had been uh, changed to a modified mirror. We placed, uh, polished up anything that needed to be polished, changed out the fuel tanks. After, after all that was put back together, um, we started the mechanical work. The body, the body uh, and then the paint, that took about two years, a little over two years. And then it was in the mechanic shop for another couple years where the engine was completely rebuilt. The transmission was rebuilt. And we went through the, uh, put in a new uh, clutch, try to make it, as close as we can to to uh, original the way it would come out on the showroom floor when it was new oh yeah we replaced the uh the seats uh the seat covers and the the foam inserts i used original looking uh seats everything so that it would look like it did originally nothing in here is modified this is this is the way it would have been from from right out, out of the showroom we put new tires on it Trying to think, there's been so much I can't Did you think do of it all. To the uh, nothing. We didn't. We, I put new springs on it, but uh, it's the original leaf springs. Didn't do anything other than shocks, things like that that can um, wear out. We put in a new water pump, new carburetor. Uh, I can't remember everything, but it, it's everything that needed new needed to be replaced was replaced. The engine is the original. The original engine. Um, it's been rolled over once, uh, just over 153,000 miles now. Just got it out of the shop recently, so 
It has less than 100 miles on the new engine. It's still being broken in. It's got to be taken care of while it's been broken in with frequent oil changes. And uh, you can't use synthetic oil on it. It's brand new engine, or well, not brand new engine, but uh, totally rebuilt engine. We put in... Uh, was it running when you bought it? Was it? The engine, was it running? Yeah, the, it was running when I bought it. It was. It had been rebuilt once before. I don't know the exact mileage on it when it was rebuilt before, but they had bored it out. And so when we rebuilt it this time, um, we put sleeves in it. So it's back to the original bore of a 302. Um, so it, it's... Um, even even mechanically, it's it's going to be running like it, it did originally. Please let me know in the comments if it's more content like this that you would like to see on my channel. I have tons of friends that want me to review their cars like I know anything about it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. See you.